Welcome back into the Better Half Hour, my favorite segment where we bring you veterans in the sports betting space winning more than they're losing. Real quick, though, if you have any sports betting questions on Thursday, hit up MSG plus minus. Use the hashtag AskAlex. Any questions, I got your answers. All right. Joining me now, you've seen him on the show multiple times, Julian Edlow of DraftKings. Julian, sportsbook analyst at DK. Great to be with you, my friend. Yeah, man. I mean, last week, unfortunately, was a losing more than I was winning type of week. What a tournament it's been. Hopefully, we're going to turn that around this week. Yeah, we all learned a lot. What were some of your biggest betting takeaways from the first two rounds? Just how much of a process you have to have to be betting in this in this tournament. Um, obviously, St. Peter's is the one that everybody wants to talk about, and we will talk about them later in this segment. But you know, even a team like Iowa State that I just felt was dead in the water. I really liked LSU going up against them out of the SEC. You know, they come back from the dead. They look terrific. The SEC, I thought, was the best conference in college basketball. They got slaughtered that opening weekend. So, really, I mean, key in on 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 this tournament. Find as many numbers as you can because anything can happen. And we got a couple one seeds left. Let's talk about Gonzaga and Kansas in particular. Do you think that they have a clear path to get to the final four? Or do you think they have a chance of being upset? I don't think anybody necessarily has a clear path, um, but things are breaking pretty well for the Zags. Um, you know, they got a good Arkansas team on tap, but the way the SEC has looked, uh, you know, are they going to be good enough? And then after that, you know, they, the, the two and three seeds did make it in their bracket. We got that Duke-Texas Tech game. But I think those are some of the weaker two and threes in the tournament and a game that the Zags would certainly be pretty heavily favored in. So I think the Zags kind of have the best path there. And you look in the bottom, you know, Kentucky was my team in the final from from that side of the bracket, and we know what happened there. Um, Baylor goes down. So lower seeds in the bottom, Purdue favored to come out. So I think things have broken well for the Zags to have the clearest path there. Yeah, and let's go back to that SEC conference. Only Arkansas is left. A lot of people are shocked. Of course, Kentucky, Tennessee as well, first SEC championships in 79. How far do you think Arkansas can go? Do you think Gonzaga is the only hurdle there in that corner of the bracket, or do you think that this is probably a wrap-up the SEC? We'll see you next year, Mom. This will probably wrap up the SEC. Um, I, I loved the SEC this year, like I said, and I think there were some teams that had a chance to beat Gonzaga. I don't know if Arkansas is necessarily one of them. Of course, you know, Arkansas gets here. They won both games. They didn't cover either of them. They played very close with Vermont and um, very close with New Mexico State. So no, no real tests uh, for Arkansas so far. So it's tough to say that the Zags, wouldn't be in a really good spot here. Um, you know, if Arkansas could pull the miracle and win this game, I, I would like him against a Duke or a Texas Tech, but I don't think it's going to happen. All right, let's go back to the Cinderella of the tournament. St. Peter's, you mentioned them. Beat Kentucky, beat Murray State. They're getting 12 and a half points against Purdue. Do you think they can cover or do you even think they could win again? I think the magic is going to uh, come to an end here. This is t typically the time of the tournament where, you know, you have those first two games. Now reality sets in. You go back to campus for the week. You're going to be hearing about how great you are. And then you got to show up and play Purdue, who coming into the tournament hadn't been able to cover a game at all. And now they get in and, uh, you know, they're doing great in their bracket. Um 12 and a half in terms of who covers, you know, St. Peter's really good defensively. They can certainly keep this one there. I might be looking at maybe like a Purdue first half bet, kind of show up, you know, thinking you're all that right now, and then run into Jaden Ivey and Zach Eady and that Purdue squad, and it gets a little out of control early. But uh, it's a lot of points here for a team that plays very good defensively. And from a betting perspective, really a futures thought, Julian, who, based off what you've seen, has – your eye, who would you put money on that is left you would feel comfortable sharing with our audience? Yeah, you know, Arizona's a team I've been all over, but now they get a game that's like a pick em game against a Houston team that's playing really well. You still have Villanova alive in that bracket. Um, so I think, you know, those one seeds you mentioned, Gonzaga and Kansas to win their regions is looking better and better based on who's gotten bounced out of this tournament. 
already. But I will say Purdue is right around even money to win their region. I mean, I I can't say that they're going to lose to St. Peter's here. So now you're going to have them at even money against a a little bit of a dinged up UNC or UCLA team in that Elite Eight game. I kind of like going with Purdue to win their region. And then if you don't like it as much, get a little hedge out because you know they're going to be favored in that game. What do you think of Duke? Do you think they can make a run? Coach K just racked up his 1,200th win against Izzo and Michigan State, down five on a nice comeback later late. Man, I had the six and a half with Michigan State. And, uh, you know, when you're winning a game outright with about two and a half minutes left, it doesn't feel good to not cover six and a half. But yet here we are. Duke has made it. Um, And they're on the second weekend. This matchup against Texas Tech, Texas Tech, really good defensive team, going to slow things down. It's interesting, and it's one that I, you know, it's a pick'em game, so obviously it's it's tough. I, I don't have the, as much of an opinion in that game, but like I said, I think that the bracket has broken well for Duke, other than nobody upsetting the Zags. If Memphis could have pulled that upset, you know, Duke would be favored to, to come out of its region. Um, I, I think that Duke has a, has a good chance to get through this one. I kind of lean Texas Tech, but if they do, that rematch with Gonzaga. Remember, Duke beat Gonzaga out in Vegas back in November. Um, I think that rematch, the revenge game, would go the Zags' way. So ultimately, no, I don't think Coach K is going to get out of his his region, but maybe they got one more in them. Yeah, I lost that Michigan State plus six and a half with you. I still haven't slept eight hours uh. since that. Just We were on the right side, Julian. <laughs> we are on the right side. But all right, let me get you out of here with this. Best bets for Thursday and or Friday. Thank you, as always. Yeah, the two spots that I'm probably looking the most confidently so far, I'm going to I'm going to lay the points with Villanova again, pretty much the same number as it was against Ohio State and and rightfully so. Not like I said, the size makes it not quite as good of a matchup as it was against Ohio State, but ultimately I think we're going to see a similar game against a similar team from the same conference. Um, you know, Villanova dominated most of that game. Ohio State made a little bit of a run, and then Villanova closed it out, defense shooting uh, and making their free throws. So I like laying it with Villanova. And then also uh, Miami. The numbers moved from around a pick to two and a half, but laying the two and a half with Miami against Iowa State. Iowa State just kind of had the perfect matchups to get here. Um, They go against an LSU team that lost its coach and uh, didn't play well offensively. Wisconsin, the perfect type of rock fight for Iowa State to win. Now they're going to play a Miami team that has three really good guards, Scored a bunch of points against Auburn, who's a really good team. I think that Miami's just going to be too much offense for Iowa State and ultimately prevail there. I love both of those. Julian, thank you so much for stopping by. Phenomenal insight. Make sure you throw him a follow on Twitter. Don't go anywhere. Oh, we're going back to the golf course. Little Lynx Locks coming up next here on the Better Half Hour.